billionaires stepping up to fill the gap. So where's this money going to come from? It's social engineering, Jakari. They want to get people from the age of three to 33. That's what they want. I mean, they even look at the dreamers. They, they call uh, young people coming here looking for a college education. They extend that all the way up to 31. They want you to stay in uh, their educational system so you can be uh, brainwashed essentially by them into that kind of thing. They, they want to keep you there as long as possible. And when you get out, they want you to have two choices. One is you can go to work for the government to erase that debt. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you're going to be an indentured servant the rest of your life. You're not going to get rid of that educational debt. You can't get rid of your college debt with a bankruptcy. You're stuck with that. So yeah, you're going to wind up being an indentured servant the rest yeah, of your life. Yeah, the way the job market is, a lot of people, they get out, they go work at you know some fast food restaurant, mm -hmm. or they go work at the mall, and you got this $30,000 worth of debt. You know How are you going to pay that off? You know, It's yeah. hard enough just to pay your monthly bills on yeah. that type of uh, salary. Well, they want to keep you in the a government. Army. And get that paid for and get free inoculations. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's a win-win situation. And then when you come back, they don't want to give you any benefits. Exactly. Yeah. They want to keep you in a government institution for at least a third of your life, and then they want to make you go to work for a government institution after that or be in debt to the government. That's precisely what this is about. But, of course, you know, it's freebie goodies, and they need to have a debate on socialism. Now, what's going to happen from the Republican side? You're going to see all the people who were governors there, as just as we do with every debate. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you how they created more jobs than anybody in history. And the only thing they could do is get out of the way. And most of them really didn't get out of the way, but they're going to take credit for that. That's what we're going to see. It looks like they're about ready to start. Let's pick up with the audio and see what they're saying. Good evening, I'm Carl Quintanilla with my colleagues Becky Quick and John Harwood. We'll be joined tonight by some of CNBC's top experts on the markets and personal finance. Let's get through the rules of the road. Candidates get 30 seconds to answer the opening question, 60 seconds to answer a formal question, 30 seconds for follow-ups and rebuttals, all at the discretion of the moderators. We want you to weigh in from home. You'll see your tweets at the bottom of the screen. Use the hashtag CNBCGOPDebate. You can also go to CNBC.com slash vote to tell us where you stand throughout the night. So let's introduce the candidates for tonight's Republican presidential debate. On the stage from left to right, Governor John Kasich. <laughs> Governor Mike Huckabee. <laughs> Governor Jeb Bush. <laughs> Senator Marco Rubio. <laughs> Mr. Donald Trump. Dr. Ben Carson, Mrs. Carly Fiorina, Senator Ted Cruz, Governor Chris Christie, and Senator Rand Paul. Oh well, yeah, they got them together. A lot to get to tonight, so let's get started. This the first is an open stage. question. We're going to stick Ran over on the end so we don't have to go to him that much. Mm -hmm. I think that's the strategy <laughs> there because he's got the only sound economic you know policy this, of all those turkeys up there. What's your biggest weakness? Yeah. So in 30 seconds, without telling us that you try too hard or that you're a perfectionist. Here we go. What's your greatest weakness? <laughs> what is, is your I thought biggest we were going to have serious questions. <laughs> so it's kind of an icebreaker. Right, Governor Kasich, 30 yeah. seconds. Good question, but I want to tell you, my great concern is that we are on the verge, perhaps, of picking someone who cannot do this job. I've watched to see people say no, that we should... His biggest weakness is he can't answer the question. And leave our senior citizens out his biggest weakness is Donald Trump. Trump. <laughs> I've heard them talk about deporting 10 or 11 um, people here from this country, out of this country. Well, he's going for Carson families. and for Trump. I think I saw on Comedy Central there was a guy who had his hand up and he was using him as a puppet. Oh, yeah. Than they are today. Yeah, they got those big puppets outside on the lead. front lawn. Somebody who can balance budgets, cut taxes. Governor? And, you know, frankly, I did it in Washington and Ohio, and I will do it again in Washington if I'm president to get this country moving again. Governor Huckabee. I will ignore well, John, the question. I don't really have any weaknesses that I can think of. <laughs> um, but my wife is down here in the front, and I'm sure if you'd like to talk to her later, she can give you <laughs> He more doesn't do the dishes. Take care oh, wait, of. that was me. Sorry, if I, I have a wife. weakness is that I try to live by the rules. I try to live by the rules, no matter what they are, and I was brought up that way as a kid. Play by the rules. Okay. And I tell you what a One thing about Huckabee, country. he made the news earlier this week talking about how gun shops and gun dealers should ignore any type of executive order from Obama trying to ban the firearms. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give him that. Uh, I mean, I'll give him anything else, but I'll give him that as we start here. 
You know, I am uh, by my nature impatient, and this is not a uh, as big as weakness as his uh, name is Bush. That, uh, yeah, that that. <laughs> his brother. You patient, you they call me Jeb, and I earned that. that. I said before. His daddy <laughs> financed the Nazis. His brother helped the to bring in 9/11, signed the Patriot Act. And it his grandfather was a founder of Planned Parenthood, uh, working with the longer thing. American politics before. I can't do it. I just don't believe that this country's days are going to be deeply you know, going down. I think we're on the verge of the greatest time, and I want to fix the things to let people rise up. Senator Rubio. Thank you for that question. I would begin by saying that um, I'm not sure it's a weakness, but I do believe that I share a sense of optimism for America's future that today is eroding from too many of our people. I think there's a sense in this country today that somehow our best days are behind us, and that doesn't have to be true. Our greatest days lies a lie ahead if we are willing to do what it takes now. And if we if create bigger government, the they can century, solve more problems. Greater than any right? Other era we've had in the history That's all we need is more government. Mr. Trump. More taxes. My greatest more military spending. I trust people too much. I'm too trusting. And <laughs> when they let me down, if they let me down, I never forgive. They're fired. I find it very, <laughs> fired. very hard to forgive people that deceived me. So I don't know if you would call that a weakness, but my wife said, let up. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Carson. Uh, probably in terms of applying for a job of president, a weakness would be not really it seeing like myself in that <laughs> position until hundreds of thousands of people begin to tell me that I needed to do it. I do, however, believe in uh, Reagan's 11th commandment. Oh, there we go. Uh, Reagan. Hey, everybody take a drink. And all yeah. <laughs> awful things about my I don't see any cores cans. And uh, recognizing that it's so shots afterwards. this election, because we're talking about America for the people versus America for the government. Mrs. Fiorina. Well, gee, after the last debate, I was told that I didn't smile enough. <laughs> So we can't tell when she's smiling. I also think that these are very serious times. 75% of the American people think the federal government is corrupt. I agree with them. And this big, powerful, corrupt bureaucracy works now only for the big, the powerful, the wealthy, and the wealthy. What are you going to do about it? Except she worked for Michael Hayden to help spy on the American people. Yeah. Just Americans who've quit looking for work for 40 years. Bill Packard biometric data. Mm -hmm. government. This is about more than replacing a D with an R. We need a leader who will help you us. You know, surveillance equipment, they should help people look for jobs. <laughs> they they like to find all the now hiring signs. Yeah, I know. Find me a job then, guy. You got these blimps up in the air. You know, I think my biggest weakness is exactly the opposite. I'm a fighter. I am passionate about what I believe. I've been passionate my whole life about the Constitution. And, you know, for six and a half years, we've had a gigantic party. If you want someone to grab a beer with, I may not be that guy. Ronald Reagan But if be. you want someone to drive you home, <laughs> I will get the job done. And oh, I'll that's kind of a... Governor Christie. Interesting uh, take on it. On the, on the stage, it. quite frankly, where I see the weakness in those three people that are left on the Democratic stage. You know, I see a socialist, an isolationist, and a pessimist. And for the, for the sake of me, I can't figure out which one is which. He wants to be the authoritarian. Uh, but, <laughs> He'll be the drug warrior but authoritarian. I will, but I will tell you this, the socialist Throw says they're going to pay for everything and give you everything for free, except they don't tell you they're going to raise their taxes to 90% to do it. The isolationist is the one who wants to continue to follow a foreign policy that has fewer democracies today than when Barack Obama came into office around the world. But I know who the pessimist is. It's Hillary Clinton. And you put me on that stage against her next September, she won't get within 10 miles of the White House. Take it to the bank. Senator Paul. Slam her to the floor. Well, only two people you know, really answered it. Yeah. Baron Harkin and speaks because I was concerned about an 18 trillion dollar debt we borrow a million dollars a minute now on the floor of the Congress the Washington establishment from both parties puts forward a bill that will explode the deficit it allows President Obama to borrow unlimited amounts of money I will stand firm I will spend every ounce of energy to stop it I will begin tomorrow to filibuster it, and I ask everyone in America to call Congress tomorrow and say, enough's enough, yep. no more debt. Thanks to all the candidates. Wow, Don, that was the only action the item there in, in that, except for uh, Chris so Christie's far. macho uh, <laughs> taking on Hillary Clinton. Yeah, not a whole lot of people. Well, still the only person that had, had to answer what they were eating this was was Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Christie will uh, pepper spray deficit. and body slam her and make Americans better off because your greatness would replace the stupidity and incompetence of others. That's right. 
Let's be honest. <laughs> is this a comic book version of a presidential no, campaign? It's not a comic book, and it's not a very nicely asked question the way you say that. Uh, Larry Kudlow is an example who I have a lot of respect for, loves my tax plan. We're reducing taxes to 15%, we're bringing corporate taxes down, bringing money back in corporate inversions. We have two and a half trillion dollars outside of the United States, which we want to bring back in. As far as the wall is concerned, we're going to build a wall, we're going to create a border, we're going to let people in, but they're going to come in legally. They're going to come in legally, and it's something that can be done, and I get questioned about that. They built the Great Wall of China. That's 13,000 miles. Here we actually need 1,000 because we have natural barriers, so we need 1,000. We can do a wall. We're going to have a big... Fat, that would be the good time right to, the since we're talking about economics, talk about the economic incentives that are going to bring people in here, whether or not you build a wall. We just saw this happen in Europe. Hungary completely closed their border. What happened? People went through Slovenia and Croatia because they're going to go to Germany. They're going to go to Sweden. They're going to get there however they can, as long as they're going to get a pot of gold from the entitlement state. So that's the problem. And they want to address that. You know, 19th century, 18th century walls are not going to stop this. Yeah, I don't think a wall, for any, but not just Trump saying this, I don't think a physical wall is going to do the job. We're at 60 seconds. We're at 60 seconds. Me, the wall is peanuts by comparison. We're at 60 seconds, but I got to ask you, you talked about your tax plan. You say that it would not increase the deficit because you'd cut taxes $10 trillion and the economy would take off like, hold on, hold on. The economy would take off like a rocket ship. Right, dynamic. I talked to economic advisors who have served presidents of both parties. <laughs> they said that you have as much chance of cutting taxes that much without increasing the deficit as you would of flying away from that podium by flapping your arms really Then hard. you have to get rid of Larry Kudlow, who sits on your panel, who's a great guy, who came out the other day and said, I love Trump's tax plan. John, thank John, you, John, 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 hey, John listen, I'm balanced. Here's the reality foundation. that people don't understand. Most of our government is run on debt. That's why we have a giant cumulative deficit. And if they want to talk about the IRS and the income tax, and that's what they're going to talk about endlessly, how many levels, what percentages they should be, they're dealing, they're rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic because they're not even coming anywhere close, even with their current tax code, to paying for what they're spending. Very appealing to a lot of voters, but I've had a really tough time trying to make the math work on this. If you were to take a 10% tax with the numbers right now on total personal income, you're going to come in with bringing in one and a half trillion dollars. That is less than half of what we build, bring in right now. And by the way, it's going to leave us in a $2 trillion hole. So what analysis got you to the point where you think this will work? Well, first of all, uh, I didn't say that the rate would be 10%. Uh, I used the tithing analogy. I, I understand okay. that, but if you, but the if rate, you look at the numbers, the, the you probably rate, have to get to 20. Cut taxes, people will hire more people, and they'll pay them more, and yeah. there will be more taxes. Yeah. People yeah. don't you understand that. You also have to get rid of all the deductions yeah. and all the loopholes. People want to say that supply-side economics didn't work, well, because they cut the tax rate. But at the same time, they exploded spending. So if you continue to spend more, even if you get in more tax revenue, your deficit is going to go up each year, and your cumulative debt is going to go up. And every one of those is uh, in a fantasy world. So also, we can stimulate the economy. That's going to be the real growth engine, stimulating the economy because it's tethered, tethered down you'd right now with cut, so many to, regulations. You'd have to cut government by about 40% to make it work with a $1.1 trillion. It's, oh it's my God, what will we, we do? When we, when we, when we put all you know, that's an interesting point. The government is expanding so quickly. Remember, with, uh, just in four years, we've had to increase the debt ceiling by 43%. I'm coming to you right now. And that, that's something that's been going on for a long time. When Harry Brown ran for president with the Libertarian Party, he said, if you completely eliminated the income tax, got rid of the IRS completely, zero it out. How far back would you have to cut government in order to, have, in order to make that neutral? You'd have to go back to the government that size it was about five years earlier. That was when Harry Brown was run about 15 years ago. And I suspect it's about the same thing now, maybe not even as far back because we're growing at a faster rate. You know, these plans would put us trillions and trillions of dollars in debt. I actually have a plan. I'm the only one on the stage that has a plan that would create jobs, cut taxes, balance the budget and can get it done because I'm realistic. Do you, you notice that all of these like Republicans this, are getting defensive on the fact that they're going to uh, cut the tax rates? Nobody is talking about cutting spending because this is CNBC. Nobody, they're going to take any spending cuts off the table. So you've got you to say, well, if we cut taxes, we're going, the deficit's going to balloon because we can never 
cut spending. We can't cut spending on the military. We can't cut it on the entitlement programs. And we can't close our borders. All those people coming in the borders are going to be part of the entitlement program.